Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! This is what the Lord told me. The greatest tool for the revival that is coming and the greatest weapon for the revival that is coming will be a life that reflects the character of the Christ in thoughts, in words, in lifestyle. End of discussion. Isn't it amazing that beyond anointing, beyond skill, beyond financial prosperity, the Lord is saying that the greatest tool, the greatest prerequisite, and the greatest enhancer of the revival that is coming is not any of the things aforementioned, but a life that reflects the character of Christ in thoughts, in words, and in lifestyle. We are talking here about a realm of intimacy with God, becoming a friend of God. You know, we live in a world right now where we are so conscious of being men of God. We are so conscious of being um, MOG. You know, when you say apostle, prophet, it seems to carry some kind of status. It can earn you access to the hearts of men. You can be endeared to men based on whatever title that you carry. But we are not talking about ministerial titles here. This is more than becoming an apostle, more than becoming a prophet, more than becoming an evangelist. Listen carefully. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond being prayerful. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond knowing scriptures. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond being anointed because for us in the body of Christ and sadly in this generation, it looks like the apex of your spiritual pursuit is being anointed. And don't get me wrong, the anointing is important. I have taught you extensively. But the days that are coming will need more than being an anointed person. The devil has fooled many people into believing that the zenith of your spiritual pursuit as you strive to be a man or a woman of stature is to get to a point where you become anointed. So we gauge our spiritual work. When you pray, when you fast, you check your level of anointing. Once it rises, you say, wow, I've made progress. I am telling you there are superior parameters for measuring power and strength in the spirit beyond anointing. You would be mistaken to think Anna the prophetess was not anointed. There's no mention of her healing the sick. In fact, the Bible says of all the prophets that came before John, he said John was the greatest. Show me how many people John raised from the dead. Show me how many miracles John did. And yet this was a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Hear me? I wrote something down here. The church needs to be drawn back to the most superior parameters for measuring intimacy and success with God. We have used mundane and very inferior parameters. That means if I ask you to arrange any two or three people based on their intimacy with God, chances are excellent that you will use the parameter of anointing or maybe crowd in ministry for a man of God, are we together? Or the extent of their knowledge of Bible or the extent of their dexterity as far as their commitment to prayer. These things are wonderful but you will be mistaken. In the midst of all of this you can still be deceived. There are more superior spiritual parameters for measuring the depth of a man's intimacy and walk with God. Are we together? Now let me tell you the truth. This, 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 these are my very deep contemplations. When it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, 
when it has to do with matters of death to the flesh it has to do with matters of character and it has to do with matters of christ-like manifestations i wrote here there are no champions there let me announce it up front there may be champions in the area of prophecy you can find people who as soon as you look at them i once met a man of god years ago sincerely i'm not sure it is not even on tv I went for a retreat somewhere and I met that man. Have I ever seen a prophet like that? This man would prophesy head to toe and say everything. I have seen champions in the area of the prophetic. History, both ancient and modern, is full of people who took this Bible and literally transported it into their heads. When you listen to some of our fathers of faith, it's as if there is another eye that was given to them that they can open. Even some of us who have touched a bit of this, we know the labor in the spirit that brought this dimension of spiritual acumen. And yet you will hear the fathers talk about scripture. There are champions in the areas of scripture and revelation. There are champions in the area of church growth. There are people who you can take them to the village they will bring every other village to that place. There, is, there are champions there. But when it has to do with the matters of death to the flesh, when it has to do with the matters of character, when it has to do with the matters of Christ-like manifestations, I repeat, there are no champions. Is someone learning now? Philippians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 12 to 15. Apostle Paul, the, the, the deep revelator or revealer of scripture, Apostle Paul, the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, not as though I had already attained. Paul is not afraid of saying this. Now you have to understand that he's speaking to the people he's mentoring. How many people have the sincerity and the unashamedness to stand before your mentees and admit that as much as they admire you, as much as they desire to be like you, you yourself have not yet attained. There are higher and deeper levels in the spirit. We live in a world where our pride, especially as men of God, is derived around the, the extent of our superstitiousness, if I will use that expression, and our that that kind of godlike mysticism here is an apostle who is saying there's no need to hide it i have not already attained either were already perfect the word there is matured but i follow after even while mentoring you i follow after even while imparting gifts upon you to be established i follow after in other words i am a student myself just privileged to be in a higher class in the spirit if I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. Reading to 15. Give us verse 13. Brethren, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. He says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It says, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That means carry a mentality that never allows you arrive. That you know that no matter what kind of exploits you are doing in the spirit, no matter the level of the anointing, no matter the level of achievement in the spirit, that you know that there are still deeper and higher realms and dimensions in the spirit. If you're with me, say amen. Now, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the state of man, man as God's creation, with respect to the subject, please look up, with respect to the subject of sin and the flesh. I have taught you here that there are two things that man has to deal with. Number one is sin for an unbeliever. But for a believer, even though you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible talks about the flesh. With one confession, 
you are free from sin but it is not one confession that frees you from flesh many believers do not understand these dynamics that you have to be free from the grip of these two things to be able to ascend the mount of God and do mighty things with God being free from sin as wonderful as it is is the entrance into the kingdom but there is another major limitation are we together and that when it has to do with the limitation of the flesh it has nothing to do with being good or bad it is a limitation that is enshrined in all men please I want you to listen to me let it be from the depth of your heart before you become a casualty to yourself one of the biggest problems that has affected the revivals years ago I preached a message why revivals die it was a product of a research that I had. I had to study the moves of God and why many of them died. And I found out there was only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. Not lack of prayer. Not lack of fasting. No. Not lack of Bible study. Not even lack of going to church. The fact that the careers and the ones who work in partnership with the Holy Spirit to sponsor this revival are men. Listen, when you press to know God, the next project in your spiritual adventure is to know yourself. If you do not pay the price to understand yourself as man, I give you a guarantee you may not arrive. You see, history, the Bible, and history is full of many great people some who crashed did not finish their project some of them were voices that were motivations to their generation and sadly towards the end of their lives something just happened that just eroded their testimony of many decades and let me tell you the truth I have studied people who have risen and stood and finished to the end. I have studied people who did not even start. I have studied people who started and did well and fell. First for my own life and then to be able to unravel this cancer of not finishing strong in the body. Are we together? I can tell you 95% of the people who have fallen in history and in the Bible are a lot more upright and sincere than many people in our generation yet they did not stand that means we have to learn there is something we need to understand about man there is a lot of blind bold face and arrogance that people are communicating in the body of Christ there are there have been sincere people who carry this baton of the faith with integrity and truth and even with that, some of them did not finish strong. It therefore is a challenge for us to understand what does it take to stand and survive being a light even to the end. You may examine many principles. You may say they were not anointed and demons came and destroyed them or they were not, they didn't understand this. Those were, they can be very valid reasons. But one of the greatest reasons is that they do not understand the construct of the fallen man. You see, when you understand yourself in light of the limitation that is upon all men, it will put pressure on you to need God as a matter of life and death. Your need for God will be artificial until and unless it is derived from this revelation of how incapacitated you are out of the assistance of God. When it has to do with the issue of the flesh, there is no man who sustains by default indefinitely the capacity to survive the varieties of, of the, what do they call it now? The, the, the spirit is in my bones. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be Holy God's fire!